New very small nuclear reactors are changing the way people think about the complex form of renewable energy. Such reactors produce one hundredth of the electricity produced by nuclear power plants. They are small enough to be moved on a truck. However, very small nuclear reactors can produce enough electricity to run a small college, a hospital, or a military base. Some universities are taking an interest. What we see is these advanced reactor technologies having a real future in decarbonizing the energy landscape in the U.S. and around the world," said Caleb Brooks. He is a nuclear engineering professor at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. The small reactors have some of the same problems as the large ones. These problems include how to deal with radioactive waste and how to make sure they are secure. Supporters say those problems can be solved and that the benefits outweigh the risks. Some universities are interested in the technology because it could replace coal and gas energy. They say those forms of energy cause climate change. The University of Illinois aims to develop the technology as part of a clean energy future, Brooks said. The school plans to ask for government permission to build a high-temperature, gas-cooled reactor developed by the Ultra-Safe Nuclear Corporation. The school start operating it by early 2028. Brooks leads the project. Jacopo Bongiorno is a professor of nuclear science and engineering at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He said these small reactors, called micro-reactors, will be transformative because they will change how power is provided. He said they can be built in factories and can easily be connected to a local power system. That's what we want to see, nuclear energy on demand as a product, not as a big mega project, he said. Mark Nickel is a director for new reactors at the Nuclear Energy Institute in Washington, D.C., he and Bongiorno consider the interest by universities as the start of a new movement. Last year, Pennsylvania State University signed a document to work with Westinghouse on microreactor technology. Mike Shacko, the company's top vice president for advanced reactor programs, said universities are going to be one of our key early adopters for this technology. Professor Jean-Paul Alain is head of Penn State's Nuclear Engineering Department. He said the university wants to prove the technology so that industries such as steel and cement manufacturers can use it. Those two industries usually burn oil or gas and give off or emit a lot of carbon gases. Using a micro-reactor also could be one of several ways to help the university use less natural gas to reach its long-term carbon emissions goals, he said. About 20 U.S. universities have reactors for research. 
but using them for energy, is new. The University of Illinois' Brooks said the extra heat from burning coal and gas to make electricity is often wasted. But steam production from the nuclear microreactor is a carbon-free way to provide heat for large buildings in the Midwest and Northeast. A college usually has hundreds of buildings. Washington, D.C.-based Last Energy has built a microreactor in Brookshire, Texas. The company is taking it apart and moving it to Austin for the South by Southwest Conference and Festival in March. Last Energy's founder, Brett Kugelmass, said he is working with officials in Britain, Poland, and Romania. He aims to get his first reactor running in Europe by 2025. He said the climate crisis is urgent, so carbon-free energy is needed soon. It has to be a small, manufactured product as opposed to a large construction project, he said. Traditional nuclear power centers cost billions of dollars. For example, two additional reactors at a plant in Georgia will cost more than $30 billion. The total cost of Last Energy's microreactor, including all the required work, is under $100 million, the company said. Westinghouse has been a major manufacturer in the nuclear industry for over 70 years. The company is developing its own microreactor called Evinci. The company plans to get the technology ready by 2027. Also, the U.S. Department of Defense is working on a microreactor project at the Idaho National Laboratory. Not everyone supports microreactors, however. Edwin Lyman is the director of nuclear power safety at the Union of Concerned Scientists, a nonprofit group. He called the movement completely unjustified. Lyman said microreactors would require much more uranium to be mined and enriched for each unit of electricity than for normal reactors. He said fuel costs would be much higher and microreactors would produce more uranium waste than full sized reactors. A 2022 study from Stanford University in Palo Alto, California, found that smaller modular reactors produce more waste than normal or conventional reactors. Modular reactors are larger than micro-reactors, but smaller than conventional ones. Lindsay Crawl was the lead writer of the study. She said the design of microreactors would make them produce more waste. Lyman said she does not support microreactors. Lyman added that he worries terrorists would target microreactors. He said some designs would use fuels that terrorists might want for simple nuclear weapons. Lyman's group does not oppose using nuclear power, but wants to make sure it is safe. The United States does not have a national storage center for nuclear fuel waste. 
More micro-reactors, Lyman said, would only make the problem worse. But Kugelmass, of last energy, sees only promise. Nuclear, he said, will be important to the world's energy transformation moving forward. I'm Mario Ritter, Jr. And I'm Dorothy Gundy. Dorothy Gundy.